Tau South Women Wisdom Conversations. I am Zaina Kanbai or um, Zaina Africa, and that is a story for another day. <laughs> I am the founder of South South Women and very proud to say that on September 5th, um, we completed our one year birthday or one year anniversary. And we deliberately, um, as a women led and women directed um, company and network, launched on the day that in the Mayan calendar, the Mayan women honor other women by recognizing the sacrifices that women before them have made. Mayan women and, and men honor their children and give gifts to their, to, to their children on that day. And the Mayan men honored Mayan women on that day. So we found it a powerfully symbolic um, gesture to launch South South Women um, on the 5th of September, 2019. And that, that gesture to honor indigenous knowledge of the Mayan community and their traditions um, and their practices is directly linked to our wisdom conversation today, which is really a conversation about the future, the orange economy. And it's a conversation about how the future and how we prepare for the future in terms of our digitalization and maximizing on the, the youngest global population in the world across the global south, um, how we can create um, new forms of, of enterprise and, and business and uh, economic and social growth while still honoring ancient wisdom and especially the ancient wisdom of our uh, ancestor mothers. So welcome today to Indigenous Knowledge, the Orange Economy. Um, and soon we will be introducing to you our influences, Hisham El Ghazar from Egypt and Luis Escalante from Mexico. Today's conversation is a collaboration with Crear Valor in Mexico, um, whose founder, is here with us today, Fernando Camacho. Um, I would like to introduce our director, South South Women Director for Lifelong Learning and Impact to take you through who we are. What have you stepped into? Who is this organization or network referred to as South South Women? Marwa, Kassam? Hi everybody, so wonderful to have you here. Well, South South Women, as Zina mentioned, was founded a year ago and is an international network of conscious women and men from the global south engaged in wisdom sharing and impact world work throughout the world. Our wisdom conversations specifically were created to build connections across cultures through sharing authentic experiences from our influencers around the world. As we founded South South Women, we were keen on establishing three values that guide us. They are the compass for everything that we do. And it starts with inclusion. Inclusion means engaging and involving people across a broad spectrum. So from all different backgrounds, from all different um, work uh, experiences um, and all ages as well. We care very much about cultivating a culture of acceptance where safety and security uh, for all is embraced. And we honor everything and everyone that we come into contact with and that we hope to grow and continuously align with what is consciously right for us and all the beings and our own planet. To do so, we behave in a certain code, which we have deemed our code of honor. We stand for and never deride one another. Support is very important here at South South Women, uh, building a sense of community. We respect and consider 
every other industry, profession, business, enterprise, expertise, network, and contacts. Because through that, we can grow together and we can maintain that trust and respect and integrity for the creation of this network, which you have now joined. We speak truth and we seek always to understand so that we can grow and create more and more and more uh, wisdom sharing uh, across our globe. So thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, Marwa. Thanks for taking us through our values and our code of honor. And to begin today, I would like to um, introduce our first uh, guest influencer. Um, before we do that, I should probably say, everybody in this room, based on the values and based on the code of honor that you have just been through, has the right to unmute themselves. We ask that you keep yourselves on mute, um, perhaps only to applaud um, the speaker at the end. May you unmute to demonstrate your gratitude and appreciation. Any questions that you have, please send them through the chat and we will be sure to give you the space, um, give your voice the space to ask that question. Okay, so to begin, I would like to introduce very proudly Luis Escalante. Luis is from Mexico and he is a leader of what we are calling the creative economy in Mexico. So he sits on the Council for Culture and Arts for his uh, state in Mexico called Nuevo Leon. He's also the director of the Adolfo Prieto Cultural Center, a prestigious center in his state. He represents uh, the board of Crear Valor in Monterrey, Mexico. And I mentioned that our collaborator for today's wisdom conversation, Fernando Camacho, is here. And Crear Valor, to honor them, their objective is to promote and generate citizen participation to positively impact society on three factors that generate development and transformation collectively, economy, art, and culture. More about Luis. In 2015, Forbes Mexico recognized him for his cultural work with the article Entrepreneurial Spirit and Art to Rescue the Country. And he's going to be telling us a bit more about that today. Other than that, he is the founder of various artistic and cultural projects, such as the theater company, and has served uh, as an administrator and executive producer of many musical projects for which he has received awards. He's also been a presenter on his, uh, his state's um, television show, Imaginarte, Imagine Yourself. And whereas I am so honored and proud to be bringing this level of expertise to this wisdom conversation, we must also mention that Luis is accompanied by our Colombian now living in Mexico, wisdom conversations influencer, Claudia, Claudia Lozano, and she, on the Rethinking Enterprise Wisdom Conversation, shared about her experience as a senior human resources business partner and a passionate, passionate enthusiast about um, service culture and change culture, for which she is a consultant and a coach. So Claudia will be interpreting Luis from Spanish to English during his presentation. Welcome, Luis. Welcome, Claudia. Luis, you need to unmute yourself. Sorry. <laughs> there we go. I missed it. <laughs> yes. Has, and has everybody gotten a glimpse of who Luis is? Wave to us on the screen. <laughs> hola, hola. Muy buenos días. Para okay. mí es un honor estar aquí con todos ustedes. Eh, muchísimas gracias por la invitación. Y para iniciar, me gustaría compartirles un refrán que tenemos en México que dice... De músico, poeta y loco, todos tenemos un poco. 
Good morning, everyone. To start, I would like to share with you a saying that we have in Mexico that says, from a musician, poet, and a madman, we all have a little bit. Este dicho hace referencia a que todo ser humano es creativo. Por ejemplo, ¿quién no es cantante en la regadera todas las mañanas? ¿Quién no ha escrito un poema a su amor platónico? ¿Quién no ha hecho un poco de drama en su trabajo por no terminar las tareas a tiempo? This saying refers to the fact that every human being is creative. For example, who has not been a singer in the shower every morning? Who has not written a poem to his platonic love? <laughs> who hasn't done a bit of drama at work by not finishing work on time? Derecho, medicina, contabilidad, ingeniería, son las profesiones que nuestros padres nos, nos animaron a estudiar. Pero quizás se equivocaban. Se acabó la era de la supremacía del hemisferio, del hemisferio izquierdo del cerebro. El futuro está en manos de una mentalidad nueva, un perfil diferente, diseñadores, inventores, contadores de historias, pensadores creativos y empáticos. Law, medicine, accounting, engineering. These are professions that our parents encouraged us to study, but perhaps they were wrong. The left brain hemisphere era of supremacy is over. The future will be in the hands of the new mindset, a different profile. Designers, investors, storytellers, creative and empathic thinkers. Esto no significa que haya que descartar la parte lógica, puesto que los dos hemisferios cerebrales se complementan, pero sí daría una ventaja competitiva a aquellos que aprendan a desarrollar su creatividad aplicándola al mundo lógico. This doesn't mean that the logical part of our brain is to be discarded, since the two cerebral hemispheres complement one to each other. But it will give a competitive advantage to those who learn to develop their creativity by applying, the logical, by applying it to the logical world. Esta es la visión que Daniel H. Pink nos da en su libro A Whole New Mind, Why the Right Brainers Will Rule the Future. Y dice, no importa lo que estudies o a qué quieras dedicarte. Desarrollar el hemisferio derecho de tu, de tu cerebro va a ser lo que te haga destacar y diferenciarte de las máquinas y del pensamiento puramente lógico propio de la era pasada. This is the vision that Daniel H. Pink gave us in his book, A Whole New Mind, Why Right Brainers Will Rule the Future, the Future, and says, It doesn't matter what you study or what you want to do. Developing the right hemisphere of your brain is going to be what makes us stand out and differentiate your, and different yourself from the machine and the purely logical thinking of the past era. Pero ¿qué es la creatividad? La creatividad es la capacidad de crear, de innovar, de generar nuevas ideas o conceptos o nuevas asociaciones entre ideas y conceptos ya conocidos que normalmente llevan a conclusiones nuevas resuelven problemas y producen soluciones originales y valiosas. Hence, what is creativity? Creativity is the ability to create, innovate, generate new ideas or concepts or new associations between ideas and concepts already known, which usually lead to new conclusions, solve problems and produce original and valuable solutions. El acto creativo en la mente del ser humano es un fenómeno complejo que se mueve en un permanente balanceo entre orden y caos, desorganización y reorganización. The creative act in the mind of the human being is a complex phenomenon that moves in a permanent balance between order and chaos, disorganization and reorganization. La creatividad añade valor intangible. Veamos este ejemplo. ¿Para qué sirve este objeto? Creativity adds an intangible value. Let's see an example. What is this object used for? Para sentarnos. To sit down. ¿Y cuánto cuesta? Aproximadamente 50 dólares. And how much does it cost? 50 dólares aprox. Y bien, ¿para qué sirve este objeto? And what is this object useful for? también para sentarnos. To sit down as well. Pero cuesta 40,000 euros. But it costs 
40,000 euros. Diseñada por Kang Myung Sung, combina la sencillez con el estilo moderno y luminoso de sus materiales que evocan el fondo del mar y las perlas. Designed by Kang Myung Sung, it combines simplicity with the modern and luminous style of its materials, which evoke the bottom of the sea and its pearls. El caso de la silla ejemplifica bien el valor agregado que la creatividad da a un producto sencillo y común. The case of the chair exemplifies, exemplifies well the added value that creativity gives to a simple and common product. El día de hoy estamos aquí para hablar de la unión de, de dos temas, la creatividad y la economía, que se conjuntan y crean el concepto de la economía naranja. Today we are here to talk about the union of two subjects, creativity and economy, the concept of the orange economy. Cuando hablamos de economía creativa, regularmente se piensa en artistas. Hay que decir que hay una relación muy importante entre ese concepto y las artes, aunque no son el único sector que abarca ese término. When we talk about creative economy, we regularly think of artists. It must be said that there is a very important relationship between this concept and the arts, although they are not the only sectors that this term covers. Hay muchas definiciones sobre economía creativa, pero podemos mencionar que todas tienen al menos dos factores en común. Uno, se refieren a actividades que tienen a la creatividad como materia prima, y dos, los resultados de esas actividades son susceptibles de protegerse por la ley. There are many definitions of creative economy, but we can mention that they all have at least two factors in common. First, they refer to activities that, are crea that have creativity as the raw material. Two, the result of these activities are capable of being protected by the law. Entonces, ¿qué es la economía creativa? La economía creativa se refiere al grupo de actividades a través de las cuales las ideas se transforman en bienes y servicios culturales y creativos, cuyo valor es susceptible de ser protegido por derechos de propiedad intelectual. Then, what is creative economy? The creative economy refers to the group of activities through which ideas are transformed into cultural and creative goods and services whose value is capable of being protected by intellectual property rights. La economía creativa definida por John Hawkins, a quien se le considera acuñó el término, comprende los sectores de arquitectura, artes visuales, artes escénicas, artesanías, cine, diseño editorial, eh, investigación y desarrollo, juegos y juguetes, moda, música, publicidad, software, televisión y radio y videojuegos. The creative economy defined by jo John Hawkins, who's considered to have coined the term, includes the sectors, architecture, visual arts, performing arts, crafts, cinema, design, publishing, research, and development, games and toys, fabrics, fashion, music, advertising, software, TV, and radio, and video games. Mexico is a country of immense herencia cultural. Nuestros antepasados forjaron civilizaciones que fomentaban no solo el conocimiento astronómico o matemático, sino que también desarrollaron fuertes vínculos a la creatividad a través de la literatura, la escultura, la arquitectura y la música. Mexico is a country of huge cultural heritage. Our ancestors forged civilizations that fostered not only astronomical or mathematical knowledge, but also developed strong ties to creativity through literature, sculpture, architecture, and music. En la actualidad, México junto con países sudamericanos como Colombia, Argentina, Chile, Brasil, se ha convertido en potencias, en potencias de las economías creativas para el mundo. Currently, Mexico, along with South American countries such as Colombia, Argentina, Chile, Brazil, have become powers of creative economies for the world. En Colombia, el sector creativo en 2017 generó al, alrededor de 250 mil empleos y aportó el 3.4% al Producto Interno Bruto del país. En Colombia, el creative sector creative sector en 2017 generó casi 250 mil jobs y contribuyó 3.4% al Producto Interno Bruto del país. 
En Argentina, para 2016, el PIB cultural fue de 2.5%. In Argentina, for 2016, the cultural GDP was 2.5%. En mi país, la industria creativa está experimentando un crecimiento exponencial. Aquí se representa alrededor del 3.2, entre el 3.2 y el 3.7% del Producto Interno Bruto y genera alrededor de 1.400.000 empleos, lo que significa alrededor del 2.4% del total de los empleos del país. In my country, Mexico, The creative industry is experiencing exponential growth. Here it represents between 3.2% and 3.7% of the gross domestic product and generates 1,400,000 jobs, 2.4% of all jobs in the country. Hay 400 millones de hispanoparlantes en el mundo. Se estima que para el año 2050 habrá 530 millones, de los cuales aproximadamente un tercio estará en los Estados Unidos, lo que convierte al país vecino de México en uno de los mercados con mayor consumo de contenido en español en el mundo. There are 400 million Spanish speakers in the world. It is estimated that by the year 2050 there will be 530 million of which approximately a third will be in the United States, which makes the neighborhood, neighbor country of Mexico one of the markets with the highest consumption, consumption of content in, this, in Spanish in the world. Todo esto implica áreas de desarrollo y oportunidades para los sectores de la economía creativa nacional y de Latinoamérica. All of this implies areas of development and opportunities for the sectors of the national creative economy and of Latin America. Para entender mejor la relación de los distintos sectores de la economía creativa con los sistemas económicos, está este modelo de círculos concéntricos de David Crosby. To better understand the leadership of the different, the relationships, sorry. To better understand the relationship of the different sectors, of the creative economy with economic systems, there is a model of concentric circles by David Throsby. Al centro del modelo se pueden situar las actividades con valor cultural alto, como por ejemplo literatura, música, artes escénicas. Estas actividades regularmente requieren mayor intervención del Estado para desarrollarse. Y hacia afuera vamos a encontrar las actividades que tienen valor económico alto o con mayor participación en un sistema económico y que regularmente requieren menos involucramiento del gobierno, por ejemplo, publicidad, arquitectura, diseño, entre otras. At the center of the model can be placed activities with high cultural value, such as literature, music, performing arts. These activities regularly require greater intervention, intervention from the state to develop. Outside, we will find activities that have high economic value, or with graded participation in the economic system that regularly require less government involvement for their development, such as advertising, architecture, design, among others. En la actualidad, un componente significativo de las economías creativas son las tecnologías digitales. Estas, junto al Internet, están modificando rápidamente los modos en que los contenidos creativos son producidos, mercadeados y distribuidos. Today, a significant component of creative economies is digital technologies. These, together with the internet, are rapidly changing the ways in which creative content is produced, marketed, and distributed. In los últimos años, pocos sectores han experimentado más cambios disruptivos debido a la tecnología que las industrias creativas. En particular, la música, la publicidad, la actividad editorial, entre otras cuyas tecnologías base y los métodos de creación y distribución de productos y servicios, así como la monetización de sus ingresos o inversiones, se han visto alterados por la revolución en las tecnologías digitales. In recent years, few sectors have experienced more disrupting, more disruptive change due to technology than the creative industries. In particular, music, advertising, publishing, television, cinema, animation and video games whose basic technologies and the methods of creation and distribution of products and services, as well as the monetization of their income and investment, have been altered by the revolution in digital technologies. Un ejemplo es el blockchain, 
Con blockchain, el modelo de industria de la música podrá dar un cambio hacia algo simple y esencial para que los artistas, como protagonistas, se puedan ganar la vida. An example is blockchain. With blockchain, the music industry model can make a change towards something simple and essential, so that artists as protagonists can earn a living. En la actualidad, el modelo de la industria de la música pone al artista independiente en un lugar lejano. Es un sistema complejo con monopolio de grandes compañías. Se ha recompensado apropiadamente, se ha convertido en una odisea cuando intervienen disqueras, distribuidores y bancos. Paralelamente, los músicos se enfrentan a la piratería y los problemas con los derechos de autor. Currently, the music industry model puts the independent artist in a distant place. It is a complex system which the because of the monopoly of big companies. Getting properly rewarded has become an odyssey. When record labels, distributors, and banks intervene. In parallel, musicians face piracy and copyright issues. En ese sentido, la tecnología blockchain ofrece transparencia a través de la cadena de valor, lo que permite que los músicos y sus representantes vean exactamente cuánto dinero se les debe, identificando al titular de, lo de, de los derechos de autor y el rastreo de sus obras. In this sense, blockchain technology offers transparency across the value chain, the chain, allowing musicians and their representatives to see exactly how much money is owed to them by identifying the copyright holder and tracing their works. La economía creativa como sector estratégico de crecimiento económico es vital. En el siglo XXI, el talento, el uso de la imaginación, la innovación, el conocimiento, la tecnología, resumidos en este concepto de creatividad, son el impulso de las economías actuales y serán el principal motor de las economías del futuro. The creative economy as a strategic sector for the economic growth is vital. In the 21st century, talent, the use of imagination, innovation, knowledge and technology sum up in the concept of creativity. And those are the driving force behind today's economies and will be the main engine for future economies. Para finalizar, me gustaría hacer una pregunta e intentar dar algunas respuestas. Al final, ustedes tienen la última palabra. ¿Qué podemos hacer como ciudadanos para ayudar a empoderar a los creativos y desarrollar las economías creativas de nuestra ciudad o entorno? Finally, I would like to ask a question and try to give some answers. In the end, you have the last word. What can we do as citizens to help creatives and develop the creative economies in our cities or environment? Here are some possibilities. Número uno, involúcrate y participa en los contenidos culturales, artísticos y creativos de tu barrio o tu ciudad. First, get involved and participate in the cultural, artistic and creative contents of your neighborhood or city. Dos, fomenta las oportunidades de empleo para jóvenes, mujeres y grupos vulnerables creativos. Two, encourage employment opportunities for creative youth, women, and vulnerable work groups. Tres, com compra artículos creativos locales. Buy items from local creative talents. Si te es posible, financia programas de capacitación y desarrollo para mejorar competencias de los creadores de tu barrio o tu ciudad. If possible, finance training and development programs to improve the skills of creative talent in your neighborhood or city. Infórmate sobre el patrimonio cultural de tu ciudad y defiende y apoya el desarrollo de espacios creativos y culturales. Find out about the cultural heritage of your city and defend and support the development of creative and cultural spaces. Investiga, fomenta y sensibiliza para lograr una mayor transparencia de políticas públicas, culturales y económicas en tu ciudad. Investigate, promote and raise awareness to achieve greater transparency of cultural and economic public policies in your city. Motiva a creadores y creativos a que se enteren de las políticas públicas que afectan su labor. Encourage creative, creators and creative talent to find out about public policies that affect their work. Organiza grupos de reflexión que, para buscar maneras de garantizar espacios públicos culturales seguros y accesibles, especialmente para mujeres, niños, personas mayores y personas con discapacidad. Organize small groups to reflect and find ways to ensure 
organize small groups to reflect and find ways to ensure safe and accessible cultural public spaces, especially for women, children, the elderly, and people with disabilities. Fomenta el respeto por el valor económico de los productos artísticos y creativos. Foster respect for the economic value of artistic and creative products. Si eres empleador, finalmente garantiza condiciones de trabajo seguras y prestaciones dignas para los trabajadores creativos. If you are an employer, guarantee safe working conditions and these decent benefits for creative workers. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. I will ask everyone to unmute to acknowledge Luis. Thank you. And for those of us who are not Spanish speakers, we may say, muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Um, I would like to honor some people just as we go into um, uh, introducing Hisham, but I do want to say that um, if you had arrived a little bit later, who you were listening to was Luisa Escalante, recognized by Forbes Mexico as a leader in uh, the creative economy and the uh, talent culture. Um, so we have been very privileged to hear some of uh, his uh, remarks and insights, some of which I know have made us uncomfortable. And if you are not one of those currently singing in the shower every morning, please start. <laughs> that is, <laughs> that's, the, that's the kind of uh, intellect that's going to be ruling the future. Um, so to those who, who arrived um, late, uh, but I'd like to acknowledge um, Hanan Beatriz Rainier from Suriname, um, Paul Tekena, Mary, Bernard, Sandra, June, um, Angel, Dante, Rosem and Rosemary. Um, thank you so much for being with us today from all your different parts of the world, for taking the time to be part of the conversation on indigenous wisdom. Are you on your way back? Um, okay, so we are also very privileged to have here with us today um, Hisham Al El Ghazad, who is an enthusiastic and passionate sustainable development innovation consultant for micro, small, and medium manufacturers and exporters in Egypt. We know um, from, the, from our personal uh, interaction with him that he is committed to fair business principles. He has worked with the likes of CEDA and USAID, the International Trade Center in Switzerland and the International Labor Organization for nearly 14 years, developing the sector of home decoration and home textiles. A man of principle who walks the talk. He is the CEO of his own export company in the Egyptian handicraft sector, Yadawi. He's also the founder and vice chairman of various institutions related to exporting and respecting the artisanal uh, craft in Egypt, um, including the Chamber of Handicrafts, uh, a board member of the Federation of Egyptian Industries, the chairman of the Egyptian Export Council for Handicrafts, and the vice chairman of the Egyptian Export Council for, um, for Handicrafts. So, Luis gave us the big picture of what the orange economy and the creative economy is. Hisham is now going to take us into how that is actually applied. And um, welcome Hisham, we welcome your knowledge, we welcome your wisdom and expertise based on your experience in Egypt to the world. Thank you Zena for uh, your kind words. Uh, hello everyone, um, it's a pleasure to be here with you today. Uh, let me share my screen with you and uh, okay. okay. Um, so uh, for today I, I chose the topic of uh, sustainability between uh, philanthropy and ethical trade. Uh, the thing is that when I started 18 years ago working in the craft sector in Egypt, 
uh, it was all about philanthropy. It was all about uh, people buying uh, crafts, products, because they want to help the artisans who they think they're poor, uh, and they think that uh, uh, it's an indirect way of giving them money by just buying their products, whether the products are beautiful or not, whether the products are well made or not, it's just they're buying from them to help them. And of course, this was not sustainable at all. This led that craft people in Egypt faced difficult times because uh, they couldn't generate enough income, income to have a good life. And with time, we started to see that craftspeople in Egypt, uh, numbers are decreasing quickly and some crafts, ha they have vanished uh, and they are no longer uh, there anymore. Uh, and this was, for me, it was a shock. It was a shock to see these beautiful uh, crafts and the people behind these crafts are no longer there. And that's how I started to think that in order to be sustainable, you should, we should start to think about it in a different way. You should start to think about it from the point of view of trading, but because sometimes trading uh, is a bad word, people think that traders are using the uh, craftspeople and uh, making them work for uh, less money, and they're the one, the people who are making the big profit, and the craftspeople are the ones who are not making any profit at all. So that's why I always say ethical trading. So I, as I mentioned, uh, I started 18 years ago. I started by creating my own company. Yadawi, Yadawi in Arabic means handmade. And the purpose of the, the, the establishing my company was to export Egyptian handicrafts. At that time, I was a pure trader just buying from the market and trying to find uh, international buyers for these uh, products. And then I started to face all these problems with quality control, with uh, artisans. Uh, they don't have uh, the enough know-how of developing their products and they don't know, they don't have the experience of doing the correct costing and pricing and uh, the packaging and the uh, export procedures and all these problems. Uh, and then that's when I gradually started working on that. And uh, five years ago, I, uh, I started this project with uh, UNHCR. It's called Neil Forat Project. Uh, Neil Forat is, uh, is, uh, is a two words. It's, uh, it's coming from uh, Nile, the Nile River, and the Forat River. Nile River is running in Africa and in Egypt, and the Forat River is in Syria. And uh, the name for this project was chosen because we targeted refugees living in Egypt from Africa and from Syria. And uh, we started five years ago training them on how to do beautiful uh, products, uh, handicrafts products. Uh, and to help them sell the products and generate income for them. This project was for two years, it ended in 2017. And when UNHCR started to exit the project, they approached me and they told me, okay, can Yadawi be the umbrella for this project to help them sustain what they have started? And we have agreed. And since 2017, Yadawi is taking care of this uh, project, Neil Farad project and we are uh, providing them with orders in order to help them uh, uh, generate income. And uh, two years ago, UNHCR, they started this uh, initiative called MATE 51. Uh, this initiative is mainly to help uh, these type of uh, projects that are helping refugees all around the world to market and sell their products in the international market. So Yadawi's mission all over the years were basically to work on developing the products. So to provide the markets with better products, 
that are related to the new trends and to promote the Egyptian handicraft whenever and whenever uh, we can and wherever we can. Also, the, the, we were targeting uh, to export our products uh, in order to be able to generate more income for our artisans and to help the craftsmen to have a better life, whether by providing them with know-how, providing them with developed products, uh, providing them with uh, capacity building trainings and so on. And also, when, when I mentioned ethical trade, we have, we have uh, been adopting from day one the fair trade principles. Uh, fair trade principles, I'm a big believer in them, uh, and I'm trying to promote fair trade as much as possible, whether inside Egypt or outside Egypt. And from the photos that you can see here, these are different photos from uh, Germany. Uh, I spent like uh, almost 20 days uh, and I visited around 18 cities inside Germany. Uh, and during these 20 days, I did like two or three presentations per day uh, telling people about Egyptian handicrafts, about the uh, artisans in Egypt and promoting uh, crafts and promoting fair trade. Uh, also, uh, as I have mentioned, we have been working on developing the products because uh, I, I truly believe that if you don't offer nice products to the market, you will not be able to sustain uh, the craftsmen and the, the crafts. So we have been developing the, the products, we have been developing the artisans, and also we have been working a lot with uh, young Egyptian designers because I also believe that empowering artisans is one thing, but also empowering local uh, designers is another thing, and both of them are like the uh, two sides of one coin. So by uh, helping both artisans and designers, uh, we will be able to sustain uh, the handicraft sector in Egypt or and everywhere else. And then comes the, the trading part. So here, these are different photos from uh, different international trade fairs that we have been exhibiting at. And I always believe that uh, trading is like the, um, the motor of a train. So it's the, the one that is driving or uh, pulling the whole sector. Uh, if you have a good market and if you can sell the products, you will be able to generate income uh, for the artisans and then you will be able to have profit. And with this profit, you can direct it into different uh, activities like uh, developing their workshops, uh, uh, helping them to send their children to schools, uh, uh, making their life better, and also maybe saving some money for uh, difficult days like uh, the days that, that we are facing now uh, during the pandemic. Uh, du during the last six, seven months, we have uh, uh, used the reserved money that we have put aside from the, the previous years in order to sustain orders and to sustain uh, providing uh, the artisans with the necessary funds to be able to uh, surpass this period uh, because with other people I know that uh, they uh, due to the uh, COVID-19 they had to stop working they had to search for other type of uh, source of income but I'm happy to say because we have been saving uh, some money for such difficult periods uh, we didn't uh, let anyone leave at all the work and we have been providing them with uh, uh, enough money uh, to uh, uh, go by. Also, these are different photos from the different capacity building uh, uh, workshops and trainings that we have been doing during the last uh, 15 years. Uh, we have uh, traveled 
all over Egypt in, into different governorates, into small uh, villages. We have also uh, trained in uh, different uh, countries like Jordan, like Lebanon. Even we have been into uh, Greece, working with refugees there and uh, giving them the knowledge that we have acquired during all these years. Uh, Marwa, can you please uh, play the video that you have? We will be playing you, for you a small video showing you the project of uh, Neil Forat uh, with the refugees. For the, for the house, but lately we shifted to, to making uh, uh, face masks in order to sustain the income. We are using the model of uh, Maker Q1 uh, together with, with UNFCR to provide the artisans in Nicaragua with uh, sustainable economic uh, empowerment. So, for example, our products were exhibited at Ambienta in Frankfurt with May 51, uh, also in Japan. So, 
So please share uh, our posts on, on, on the social media, on Facebook, on, on Instagram. Uh, go to our website. Please send us orders. This will help our artisans to sustain their income. Thank you. <laughs> so let me finish my. Uh, uh, I'll, okay, just. So yeah, so uh, I hope you liked the video. It was a small video that uh, was produced by UNHCR. Uh, and let me tell you the, why handicrafts present, uh, preservation is important. Uh, from working with, uh, all these years with artisans uh, and, and in the handicraft sector, I always believe that it's all about the story and people behind the product. It's not only the product. As consumers, we only see, we, we see the product, but if we get to know the story and if we get to know the people behind the product, I think the way we are going to see uh, the products that we are buying is going to be completely different. Uh, there are amazing stories behind uh, the products and amazing people behind the products. Uh, and that's why I think we should uh, do our best to preserve handicrafts because by preserving handicrafts, we preserve our history. Uh, handicrafts all over the world, it's, it's a part of the world history. And that's the main reason we have to preserve this uh, and help people tell their story. And quickly about the lessons learned from artisans. This is one of uh, the latest photos I took when I was uh, uh, doing capacity building training last week in Upper Egypt, in one of the smallest village in Egypt. And I met these two amazing girls. The one to the left is uh, 13 years old and the one to the right is 11 years uh, old. They're two sisters. Uh, they're going uh, attending school and they, uh, they're also attending how to, uh, they were trained on how to do uh, handmade carpets uh, and they have attended with their mother and uh, eldest sisters my trainings and I was astonished from how clever they were and they were answering all my questions uh, even the hardest questions that the other women there in the room the older women they couldn't answer they were they were able to answer these questions. They were able to, to tell me about how uh, designs are being inspired from nature. And I thought maybe they got this information from the internet and I told them, do you have internet? And they told me, no, they, we don't have internet, we don't have Facebook, we don't have anything. So they, they just naturally answered all the questions that I was, I was talking about designs, I was talking about product development, I was talking about costing and pricing, and they, they just engaged in a very clever way with me. So this, this is part of the, the story that I would like to tell that it's, all, it's always about the people and it's always about these people who are uh, making me uh, work more and try to help them more and try, try to preserve the handicrafts in Egypt and all over the world because of, of the, the older generation who are currently working and because also of the new generation who are giving me uh, inspiration. And uh, last but not least, I would like to say that if you are able to promote handicrafts in your areas, just try to, to tell people that craft is a mix of passion, uh, is a mix of time, experience, and knowledge 
of the artisans. So that's why it should be highly respected. That's how we should promote uh, handicrafts uh, in our areas. Thank you so much for uh, being there. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Hisham. I think um, you, you have given us um, so many things to think about in terms of how, and this is what struck me in particular, is that how philanthropy, even with the best of our intentions, can serve to destroy an entire economic sector. And really placing emphasis on um, how young people and local designers can become part of a global artisanal value chain. Um, and one of the things that I believe, because I think that you and Luis have, have just been such a beautiful uh, combination of, uh, of experience and wisdom and, and future thinking, um, future thinking, um, uh, I don't, you know, road mapping uh, for us in, uh, in terms of what the future could look like in this, in this sector, it would be really great to have another conversation um, at some point about how the global artisanal value chain would work amongst the global south. Um, our, our talent and our creative resources is really where it all began. Um, our young populations is really what we have to bank on um, to grow our, um, our collective economies. So um, that would be something truly amazing and thank you very much. Um, I would like to, we have gone two minutes over and I would just like to give a, a couple of people the opportunity to present their comments out loud. And I will start with um, Kelly Aburi, who uh, is actually our uh, South South Women Director for Ethical Business and Conscious Entrepreneurship. Kelly, do you, um, you had made a comment about the connection with the environment. Would you like to? Yeah, I think um, the more that we promote local artisan and local trade, um, we'll have a more positive impact on the environment. And, um, <clears throat> and I think people need to uh, stop thinking that everything outside of their countries is better than what they produce in their countries. And that's very typical within the developing world. And I think uh, seeing some of the artisanship there now that um, we, we have been able to see on the video, it's um, very clear that they, they have a standard that can be sold anywhere in the world. But I think it's very important that we, we promote local artisanship from an ethical point of view and also an environmental point of view. So thank you very, very much for that presentation. Both thank you, you, Kelly. Um, is Beatrice, are you, are you still here? Um, I know some people had to, to leave the call. Um, Beatrice says I, she works with the, the Ministry of Agriculture for the government of Argentina. Um, she says, I believe that the training and accompaniment to improve, I believe in training and accompaniment to improve these fundamental economies. Projects from the private sector could also be presented to encourage public policies to develop capacity and supply inputs, especially to achieve the growth of the most vulnerable. Um, ah, Mabel, are you, are you here? I think you're still writing to me, but I don't see you on the, on the screen. Okay, there you are. Yes, 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 I am still here. Okay, Hello? would you like to add on to anything I've, I've said? Yes, um, yes, of course. I think that uh, joint work between uh, the private sector and public sector are, uh, are synergic and necessary to improve condition of develop of the community in, in general. Uh, and personality uh, that uh, uh, seem think that government need this uh, dynamic and energy uh, that is uh, manifest in this type uh, of meeting um, where where we all have uh, ideas to contribute con contribute and and the desires to carry them forward every year everybody. Thank you so much, Mabel. Gracias. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. An important perspective coming from a position in, in a Ministry of Agriculture. Um, is there anybody else? And as I'm uh, 
um, taking questions and comments. Um, I would also like to welcome Jimena from Peru and uh, Rosalie from Jamaica. Is there any, um, and Mausi, hi Mausi from Argentina and Ibiene from Nigeria, also our South South Women Director for Public Relations and Communication. Um, Luis, do you have anything that you would like to add or, or share? Sí, eh, este, desde, el, desde el estado de Nuevo León, hemos, esto que acaban de comentar me parece muy importante la presentación de Hisham. Hemos trabajado en conjunto con la Secretaría de Economía. ¿Quieres que te traduzca ya? Sí, please. Ok, from the uh, Nuevo León State in, here in Mexico, uh, we have been working with in some of the aspects that we have been talking about and I want to refer to something that Hicham was mentioning. Eh, hemos trabajado a través de la creación de clusters, un cluster eh, de medios interactivos, un cluster de turismo y en ambos casos Eh, se trabajan diferentes aspectos, pero siendo relación o involucrando a la, a la industria privada, como ahora se decía. We have worked with different clusters. ¿Me puedes repetir los clusters, por favor? Clusters de turismo y de medios interactivos. Um, eh, tourism clusters and interactive media clusters, so that we can contribute. Y podemos unir a esta cuestión de la triple hélice, que es el gobierno, la, las universidades y la industria privada. So we can contribute to a, this, a third party model that is government, universities and um, private, private initiative. Principalmente en la parte de capacitación, nos abocamos mucho a la capacitación con un programa estatal para todos los creativos y los creadores, y además con una salida de venta, como bien lo ha este, mencionado Hisham, una estructura y una estrategia para darle salida a los productos, servicios creativos. We have mainly focused on, on training creators and creative talent, and we have also supported the sale of the goods of these creative talents. En Nuevo León no tenemos una gran eh, tradición de artesanías, más bien es un estado eh, un poco más hacia otros sectores, pero aún así apoyamos toda la parte de ventas de los creativos. We don't have um, a great heritage on, on handcraft, nevertheless we are supporting our artisans on the selling of their goods and services. Eso es. was mentioning his case. Gracias. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. Would there be any um, final comments to make, Hisham? Would you like to um, to to add? Some? Oh, June. June. You have your hand raised. Yes, hi. Thank you. Hi, Thank welcome. you so much. <laughs> Thank you. This is June Gashiri from Nairobi, Kenya. Um, thank you so much to the presenters and the, just for sharing uh, your passion for this space um, and the information. I think for me, the, I'm, my background is um, intellectual property law, so I wanted to maybe just get some more clarity or guidance um, about the intersection between the two. Um, not too long ago, I think in 2016 in Kenya, we had our traditional knowledge and traditional cultural expressions act that uh, came into law. <clears throat> and these were things that were included in our copyright act before and now had been moved to their own act, their own statute. Um, however, the challenge always becomes, you know, who the real owner is, because some of these things, if they stem from a traditional or cultural, let's say a tribal community, for example. Um, so I'd like to hear maybe some um, examples of how this has been handled in, in various countries for, for the different uh, people uh, who are either on the panel, but even in the group. Um, 
and how do we make sure that there's some sort of registration or how is that happening? Is it under the Ministry of Culture or how is that happening currently? Thank you. Thank you very much, June. Thank you for your question and an important one. So I'll turn it first to Hisham and or Luis, if you have any, um, any particular knowledge or are able to respond um, to June's question, um, which was regarding the connection between um, intellectual property and law and who is the real owner of, um, of, the, of the product and how is that reflected in legislation? And if anybody else uh, from another country has also had experience in this, please let me know by the chat and we will make sure to have your voice uh, heard. I'll turn it first to Sam or Luis. ¿Me puedes repetir la pregunta? Uh, sí, su, su, su pregunta tiene que ver con la legislación y la ley. Y se está preguntando, e, ella es, es una abogada, y se está preguntando o quiere saber un, po, un poco más sobre quién es el dueño, el, el, el dueño del producto, o sea, la, el, el, el tribu local o la comunidad indígena o otra entidad, y cómo se refleja esa, esa como, uh, confusión en, en, en la ley. ¿Quiere, quiere que elaboremos un poco de, de, de la perspectiva de, de, de experiencia? Eh, bueno, si me permiten, el, um, los derechos de propiedad intelectual son inherentes a quien, los, a quien lo produce. Eh, hay de manera natural quien nace y crea algo es dueño de eso. Ok, so the um, um, intellectual property is inherent or is owned by the person who produces the goods. The person who creates it, it's the owner of the, of the creation of it and the, the rights for it. Eh, sin embargo, hay eh, procesos y procedimientos legales que se tienen que hacer para protegerlo. Nevertheless, there are procedures, legal procedures, to be followed, to, be, to protect those creations. Y, y ahí es donde en ocasiones eh, los creadores, los creativos, faltan a esa parte y en muchas ocasiones se cometen, eh, se cometen pues, robo de esa propiedad, este o de ese uso de esa creación. So sometimes creative talents or creators, they are not aware of the steps they have to follow to protect their creations. And that's when there are issues related to the rights of intellectual property. En México, eh, estamos trabajando para fortalecer el sistema de propiedad intelectual. Es, un, es una... Es una situación que eh, teníamos mucho problema porque es un, requiere un proceso muy burocrático. Poco a poco se ha ido trabajando para que esto sea mucho más sencillo para los creativos. In Mexico, we are working on strengthening the, the policies related to intellectual property. It has been for some time an issue and now we are working on, on it. Eso quiere decir. Gracias. That's what I wanted to say. Thank you. <coughs> Unmute. Any, Hisham, anything to add to that? Uh, yes, I, uh, I agree with uh, what Louis said. And uh, creative industries uh, is, is big. And you have lots of uh, different things that people are doing. So it's... You have the people who are uh, uh, writing books or writing uh, songs or people who are making the, the music, uh, the co composing music for the songs or uh, making uh, uh, movies. And then you have people who are doing the handicrafts, which is my sector. With the handicraft sector, uh, it, was, it, it is really very difficult uh, regarding uh, the intellectual properties. Uh, mainly, uh, the designer is the person who owns the, the intellectual property rights, and uh, if the uh, uh, craft 
craftsman is paying the designer for this design, then the rights goes is, is transferred to the craftsman. But the thing is that we, what we have been seeing all over the, the last years is that uh, uh, it's very difficult to prove it. And if you change a little bit in the design, then uh, you can uh, have a, another product and you can say that it's your, your own design and you can run away from this, from the properties. Uh, penalties. So the, the problem is it's a very tricky uh, a subject and it's very tricky to prove that you have uh, copied something. I have uh, seen a couple of years ago uh, one case in in Germany in one of the biggest trade fair, uh, fairs there uh, where it was uh, an Indian producer who copied a German designer. He copied all his designs and because they were exhibiting in Germany, the German designer was able to uh, call the police and they came and then uh, this Indian producer was in big problems. Uh, but other than that, it's really very difficult to prove it and very difficult to take actions. And if you want to register the designs with your name, it's also it's a very lengthy process and it's very costly. Also, it takes lots of uh, money to, to do it. So usually people who are doing that are big manufacturers uh, who are doing, uh, who are, uh, they have a, a technology, a new technology or something like that. And they're able to pay all this money to protect uh, this new technology. Thank you so much, Hisham uh, and Luis. And I think June, we empathize with the dilemma that you are dealing with. Um, if you have any further questions for either one of the two, please send us a message directly and we will make sure to connect you so that um, you can keep the conversation going if you need to. And with that, I would like to bring uh, this wisdom conversation, a very enlightening wisdom conversation to, um, to a close. Um, we do have a comment from Beatrice Pomier. Um, from Bolivia, she said they have amazing artisans and handicrafts people and nobody to represent them. So that is probably an area that they would like us to begin uh, expanding into or working in. Um, Kelly, who had to leave, I think the creative economy is growing exponentially and we can chip in to ensure that we contribute in our own way. I'm really passionate about creating a recruitment portal for the creatives in Africa, connecting creatives and top companies. And this conversation has been very helpful to me. I have to leave the call for a work meeting, but would love to continue the conversation. So we can find a way to engage Kelly on that um, uh, great idea of hers, which I think would bring a bit of Luis and a bit of Hisham's uh, <laughs> intellect into, um, into the conversation. Um, mine is to really thank you all very, very much from once again, every part of the world that you have joined us from to participate in this conversation of merging the past with the future and creating something powerful from both in the present moment, looking at new opportunities for a global economic sector to thrive um, and one that will really benefit our women and our young population and a sector of, uh, well, as we look at handicrafts, a sector of the world that has probably not been acknowledged to, to its uh, maximum potential. And as Luis was, uh, was encouraging us to really look at the ways that the orange economy, as we are now going to get used to calling it, um, can create to um, economic um, and social transformation of our cities and environments. Thank you very much, Claudia, for um, bringing uh, Luis's voice and thoughts to all of us in this platform. Um, thank you very much from South South Women, and we look forward to seeing you uh, next. Uh, thank you very much to Crear Valor for bringing uh, Luis uh, onto this platform. Uh, Fernando, <laughs> now there you are, we see you in the camera. Um, we look forward to seeing you next week for Amplify Your Voice. You will be receiving a recording um, of this session. You will be receiving a follow-up email from us, which will include an invitation to the following Monday session. If you have any questions, 
South South Women is your family. South South Women is your platform to amplify your voice. So please let us hear you and let us know how we can serve you better. Thank you very much. Thank you. And see you all soon. Gracias. Gracias. Bye. Gracias. Bye. Bye. Gracias. Bye. Thank Chao. you. Gracias. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Gracias. Thank you. Gracias. Bye. Gracias. Gracias. Gracias, Aina. Gracias. Chao.